And Ajoy Chaudhary, the director of finance at REC, joining us right now to give us a color on where this sector could be had headed. Uh, uh, Mr. Chaudhary, great to have you today on ET Now. Thank you so much for uh, taking the time out and joining in. You know, we've been highlighting a couple of factors that are working in favor of the sector, right? The power demand, which has hit a record high in the month of August, the thrust and power sector capex as well. Tell me, how does it change the outlook for you? What is the financing opportunity for you at REC? Yeah, so uh, good morning and thank you for having me in your show. So, uh, yeah, uh, a few things that are happening in the power sector uh, is one is uh, energy transition which, uh, you know, uh, we think that will give us a strong growth momentum in the days to come. Recently in Goa, you know, G20 ministerial summit on the sidelines, we had uh, uh, discussions with many developers and we uh, signed an MOU of close to uh, 2.75 lakh crores. So, it, uh, you know, all kinds of uh, renewable projects, uh, solar, wind, hybrid, uh, e-mobility, hydrogen, PSP, and whatnot. So <clears throat> that's a space that will give us a, a very good uh, growth momentum. The secondly, the second uh, space is a non-power infra space. You know, last year we diversified into non-power infra as well. So that uh, uh, you know, looking uh, very good. Uh, we signed. Uh, we have uh, you know given sanctions for close to one lakh crores of uh, uh, projects. Uh, which will, uh, you know, convert to disbursements uh, shortly in the year, days and months to come. So that's a very good space. The third thing, very, very interesting thing happened, and the, I think the most important thing is the uh, distribution sector reforms. Uh, you know, the, uh, the efforts of the Ministry of Power, I think, is finally uh, paying off, and uh, we are seeing a sustained improvement uh, in the distribution sector the overdues of generation and transmission companies have come down by almost half from 140,000 crores to 70,000 crores. All current dues are being paid on time. Subsidies are coming from the government. Tariff revisions are happening. So that has given a uh, you know, lot of impetus uh, uh, to the sector and the investors are quite excited about it. So these are the things uh, you know, that is working in favor of uh, power companies like RNC. So do you stand by your AUM target uh, by 2030 or do you hope to achieve the uh, 10 trillion rupee mark even before that? I think we should be able to, uh, you know, achieve that before that, uh, given the kind of, uh, you know, momentum that we are seeing. As of now, we have kept uh, at 10 trillion dollars with uh, at least, uh, you know, 3 trillion dollars coming from the renewable space. Uh, but uh, I'm sure, you know, uh, with a kind of momentum last uh, quarter, uh, we sanctioned around 90,000 crores of uh, projects and our disbursement was also yeah, on a year on a year, 175% up. So I, I think uh, we may have to soon revise it. Uh, what we understand is that the renewable capex yeah. and the non-renewable capex, there's a big difference. Most of the private companies are not looking at expanding their capacity in the thermal sector. That's where the traditional bulk capex requirement and the funding requirement was growing. This contraction of this space, how will this affect your business? So, uh, you know, uh, thermal power uh, will remain. Yes, you are right that there will be some contraction in the space. Uh, renewable energy, uh, of course, uh, you know, huge demand is there and, uh, and we should compensate uh, this uh, you know, slight uh, moderation in the capex of the generation space by uh, non-power infra, where we see a lot of opportunities. Further, uh, you know, uh, the distribution uh, sector and the transmission sectors will also need a lot of upgradation and uh, modernization. So there also the RDS scheme of the government of India, uh, which uh, has a total uh, capex outlay of three trillion dollars, out of which two trillion dollars will be. Uh, by way of, uh, you know, uh, equity from the state and loan, largely loan part, uh, which we shall be looking to tap into. So I think, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the moderation in the thermal generation space will not so much affect given the kind of, uh, you know, opportunities are, that are available uh, in the uh, renewable space, the non-power infra and in the distribution and transmission area.
Right, Mr. Chaudhary, morning now. In the past, asset quality has been a bit of a concern, but I believe now you're targeting a net zero NPA by 2025. What exactly is driving this confidence? What is it that you're going to be doing differently than which you did earlier that would actually ensure that your asset quality sustains? Right, right. So, you know, earlier uh, there were a few things happening uh, in a thermal space, which is that first, uh, many of the projects did not have the revenue tied up. Uh, the PPS were not in place. Then, of course, there was this coal block cancellation, which uh, impacted some of the projects. And, you know, uh, some of the entities were not that strong at that time. And therefore, you know, they could not bring uh, uh, required equity in case of cost overruns or, uh, you know, they could not pull through the projects when they were in difficulty. Uh, but now what we do is we deal with only uh, very strong, uh, you know, players who are generally A-rated players. Uh, that's one. The Secondly, you know, we don't uh, uh, go without our revenue uh, stream tied up in the project. Uh, that's what we have done. And the third, the important step that we have taken is the monitoring. The monitoring, uh, you know, uh, now we are engaging specialized monitoring agencies to monitor each and every project. And in case of conventional uh, uh, space, uh, we are actually putting them at the uh, site and therefore, uh, they are able to give us a first-hand information of all that is happening. Unless they tell us, you know, everything is going right, uh, all the statutory clearances are in place, the progress is, uh, you know, uh, what we expect. We are actually not dispersing, and we are, in fact, uh, you know, taking corrective action, timely corrective action. So these things, I think, have changed, and the asset quality has, uh, you know, improved. Last uh, six quarters, we did not have any NPA. And we hope, uh, you know, as you said, by 25, March 25, we shall be a net NT0 company. Okay. Uh, when do you think the NCLT resolutions, you've got a long pipeline there. How yeah. realistically do you think they will be settled in this year? So, yes, uh, you know, NCLT, NCLT process uh, has been a little less lower than what we expected. Uh, but uh, now, uh, you know, uh, we are seeing a lot of traction there. Uh, so I think that uh, uh, this year uh, we should be able to resolve uh, uh, out of our 14,800 crores of uh, stage three assets, we should be able to resolve around 7,000 crores this year. Uh, so that includes some of the large projects like Lancomer, Contact, TRN Energy. Some will be through the NCLT process and some will be out of NCLT as well. And uh, some, uh, one or two projects will be, uh, you know, resolved this quarter, it's the current quarter. So uh, that's what. And the next year, uh, we should be in a position to resolve the rest of it. Many NP so, accounts is that? Uh, uh, the, which we are going to resolve now? Yeah, yes. one is Binakshi Energy, hmm. where we have close to 700 crores of exposure. The other is Dance Energy which is the hydro project. Now it has a PPA tied up and, you know, we are getting 100% recovery there. So the entire uh, provision will uh, have a right back. You know, uh, what had hit you was, let's say, Minakshi, Lamco, Lanco, and, you know, other uh, specific plants. How is the power cycle different this time? Because right now things are looking good. Everybody wants to expand. I remember the similar cycle was that play in 2006 and 10 where everybody wanted to expand because merchant power prices were strong, demand was high. And then the cycle, a good cycle became a bad cycle. How is right, this cycle right. different this time? Yeah, this time, you know, last time, uh, many of the projects we saw, uh, you know, failed due to non-tying uh, of, of the PPAs. So this time, you know, the the uh, growth that is happening is coupled with the distribution sector reforms. So the distribution companies are becoming stronger. You know, they are they are having regular tariff revision, and that will give a lot of impetus. So today, you know, the, the generation company, the transmission companies are all getting paid on time. Secondly, you know, the renewable space is attracting a lot of good, uh, you know, invest uh, your know, PE funds. Uh, like we have seen KKR, uh, you know, Actis and uh, uh, Macquarie, they are all coming into this space and they are very, strong, very, very strong players. So, so I think, uh, you know, uh, with the strong players in place and the reforms in the distribution sector, uh, uh, things will be definitely be different. And in fact, Thermal had uh, also a lot of other issues, you know, in terms of uh, right of way, you know, clearances, 
uh, availability of coal, et cetera, which are not there in this renewal space in particular. And of course, in the, also in the non-power infra. All right, appreciate your time. Thank you for joining in and giving us an overall view on REC and how things are shaping up.